Well, as I said, I'm with the FBI, not the ATF. We're in charge of this now. Isn't that like getting in a fight with a neighbor boy and he whoops you? And his big brother comes over to investigate? No, it's not like that at all. Tell me, Gary. You gonna come kill us all? Mm. That was from the new TV miniseries, Waco, airing on Paramount Network. It is based partially on the book's Stalling for Time by Gary Nessner, who was portrayed right there, you saw. Um, and also, Waco, A Survivor's Guide by David Thibodeau. Gary and David are back with us now. Um, David, you were inside the compound for those entire 51 days. You were close with David Koresh. Describe what the people were like and what those t that time period was like. The, the, the 51 day yeah. time period? Well, that was a pr very much chaotic. It was, I, you know, a, a different lifestyle than, than what we had been used to. Kind of two MREs a day, meals ready to eat. And uh, the water was, was uh, rationed as well. Um, there was a lot of, it was, it was an exciting, obviously an exciting time, but watching daily the press conferences, there would always be, the FBI was in control totally of the information that the world got. Mm -hmm. And so when you're not able to kind of respond to things on a daily basis that people are saying about you, it becomes very frustrating, especially the communication breakdown uh, between David Koresh, Steve Schneider, and, and the FBI negotiators. His there. Lieutenant Steve Schneider. They, when you see the videotapes, because they were taking videotapes inside uh, the compound, the, mm -hmm. the Davidians were, and it's these lovely people talking with their kids and holding little ones and... You know, they're calm and they seem peaceful. Um, of course, the story on the other side is that they weren't, that they had killed ATF agents and that they had an arsenal in there, including explosives, which is what they claimed made the ATF interested in them in the first place, Gary. Well, you know, I wouldn't characterize them as not being some good people who were there to follow David Koresh. They believed in him. But, yes, they'd been engaged in some illegal activity, which prompted uh, uh, the ATF to raid the building. And then... Now, all of a sudden, we have to show up as the FBI, and I'm running the negotiations, and there's uh, four people killed on the ATF, four, five, six uh, uh, Davidians, many wounded. It's a pretty difficult situation to now say, let's all be friends and, and chat nice. How many did you get out? How many? We got 30, my negotiation team got 35 people out, including 21 children, over the first half of the 51-day siege. And then you were kind of removed from the picture because you had a difference of opinion on how it should go? Yeah, I mean... In addition to the conflict inside the compound, as, as David Thibodeau here just, just referred, there was conflict within the FBI. There was uh, the negotiation team that wanted to basically engage in dialogue and convince them to come out to share with the world what they thought about things. And there was a part of the FBI that wanted to force them out, to tighten the noose, as it were, to exert increasing amounts of pressure. And those two things were in, in contrast and contradiction and created a lot of problems for us. And uh, it, they, it did not go the way you wanted it to. Not at all. Not another hostage came out after Gary was removed. They weren't really hostages, though, I have to tell you that. We yeah, never right, they that weren't. Way. They were they followers. Were, they wanted to be there, yeah. They wanted to be there. So, and, and you wanted to be there. Well, yeah, and the other thing about the hostage negotiation team, they went through 23 negotiators during the... I believe that's the correct number, during the course of the 51-day siege. That was very frustrating for David. I mean, I think... He really liked Gary. I know there was a couple of the negotiators that he had a, a report with, and it just seems like the tactical commanders would take those people yeah. off. And One of the many reasons the, the feds took a hit. I'll give you the last word on the cultural impact of Waco and why people should care. Waco has uh, had resonance with um, folks that largely believe that the government has overstepped in some of these areas. It certainly was the motivation for Timothy McVeigh. Um, after the Oklahoma City bombing, there seemed to be a significant drop in recruitment uh, in the anti-government movement, realizing that um, they may think the idea is nice, but when you kill all these children in a federal building, that's not what people signed up for. But now, with current events, we've had a resurgence um, in folks that have a very strong negative uh, feeling about the government. And for me, a lot of that's unfounded. This is a complex situation. It's, it's one that should not just demonize the Davidians, or the FBI, there's good and bad on both sides. And that's what's great about this TV show. It really gives you a look that no one's seen before about that. Well said. Thank you both. Can I have one point there? Sure, quickly. I just don't believe that the police should be militarized. That we should have a military and we should have a police force. The police should be there to protect and serve and not be militarized, come into people's homes with tanks. David is now living in Maine um, and is 
He, I said, are you still at Branch Davidian? He said, I never realized I was one. <laughs> I was <laughs> living with my friend David in a compound, uh, and things went south. Thank you both so much for being here. Waco premieres this Wednesday on Paramount Network. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there, and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.